Well, let's go ahead with the discussion on post-structuralism. Post-structuralism is a late 20th century movement. As we said, uh, structuralism started in late 1950s. Post-structuralism started after that. Okay. It was preceded by structuralism in the 1950s and 60s in France. So it is a late 20th century movement in philosophy, especially, and literary criticism. Of course, it is difficult to summarize. We can't give a brief summary of what a post-structuralism is. But it generally defines itself in its opposition to popular structuralism movement. So it was a kind of opposition to structuralism. Structuralism was there, as I mentioned earlier, in the 1950s and 60s in France. Post-structuralism is closely related to postmodernism. Of course, these two concepts are not synonyms. You need to understand. They are not one and same. We can't replace them. We are going to understand what postmodernism is, or you can read the material available uh, in the background. I give an already uh, something on postmodernism too. So in the post-structuralist approach to textual analysis, the reader replaces the author. This is the major change. Reader becomes the center. He replaces the author. The author does not remain prominent in this textual analysis. So the reader replaces the author as the primary subject of inquiry. Okay, means there is no central position to the author. So post-structuralists examine other sources for meaning. Means what? They don't simply rely on author. For example, they. Uh, understand the reader's psychology, cultural norms, and they uh, try to compare it with other literature. And this is how they try to analyze the text. Therefore, their analysis is never authoritative. And there is no consistency what I said may be different from what others say. As a reader, okay, my approach may be different from others' approaches. So there is no consistency as such. So this is the problem with post-structuralism. It is difficult to understand. So a reader's culture and society share at least an equal part in the interpretation of a piece. It's my background. My cultural background, my social background, my knowledge of other things. You know, all these aspects have a role to play in the interpretation of a piece of literature to the cultural and social circumstances of the author. For example, if the author is from England and he's, he has written the book from that point of view, as a reader, I have my own cultural and societal background. And it plays a role in the interpretation of a text. Okay, so this is how we can see that there are different sources for meaning. There is intertextuality. We try to understand it with the help of other texts as well. Okay. Now, there are certain key assumptions, you know. What are these key assumptions which underlie post-structuralism? Let's try to understand this, and then we shall end the discussion. OK. Uh, the concept of self, that is the first key assumption. 
the concept of self as a singular and coherent entity is a fictional construct okay so this concept of self when i say i okay myself so when we try to understand it as a singular and coherent entity singular means only and coherent means you now which can something uh, something which can be understood which has got a kind of connectivity you must have studied coherence with reference to halliday in your last semester in linguistics cohesion and coherence so they assume that self is you know self as a singular and coherent entity is a fictional construct there is no self as such what is self for me may be different for others and an individual rather comprises conflicting tensions and knowledge claims this is the first assumption means gender class profession etc have the role to play in the interpretation of the text the interpretation of meaning of a text is therefore dependent on a reader's own personal concept of self what i feel becomes important here in the interpretation of meaning so therefore there is no consistency this is the key assumption there is no singular and coherent entity as self because it is a fictional construct it is imaginary one okay so the readers gender the readers class the readers profession and other aspects in indian context we can say religion caste uh, religion is universal of course but caste in india has a role to play in south asia especially okay and in indian context it is very dominant so these factors have a role to play in understanding the text second key assumption is that an author's intended meaning is whatever the author wants to say of course uh, the author's own identity is a stable self with a single discernible intent is also a fictional construct even if the author thinks that this is the meaning that i wanted to communicate that is again a kind of imagination a fictional construct there is no intended meaning as such and this intended meaning is secondary to the meaning that the readers perceive okay what the reader understand is primary what the author want to say is not uh, no important that is secondary and a literary text or any situation where a subject perceives a sign sign the combination of signifier and signified text is a kind of sign and this literary text has no single purpose meaning or existence so post structuralism you know is a kind of revolutionary theory it shackles our you know belief system itself it does not believe in consistent meaning as such it does not believe in single purpose single meaning or single existence thirdly it assumes that it is necessary to utilize a variety of perspectives to create a multifaceted interpretation of a text okay we should have variety of perspectives to create a multifaceted interpretation there is no single interpretations of a text there is no single meaning even if these interpretations conflict with one another means suppose at one time i feel that this is the meaning and at the second time if i look at from different perspective i have come up with a different meaning and these meanings may not be same they must be they may be conflicting but it is necessary in understanding the text okay and we need to understand that post structuralism emerged in france during the 1960s 1960s was a period of political turmoil rebellion and disillusionment with traditional values 
which was accompanied by a resurgence of interest in feminism, Western Marxism, phenomenology, and nihilism. So these are some of the isms. So we need to understand. So you can think of creating your uh, quizlets on different isms. Okay. Uh, we shall continue our lecture. We shall dis discussion in the next lecture.